Welcome to Discretion Advised. My name is John Hill. Hot off the presses, lots of news to cover, lots of stuff to discuss with Mark McNamara. Mark, are you there? How are you? How's your day? I am sorry, y'all. I am late. John and Cameron have been waiting on me. I had a little bit of te- technical difficulties, so I literally have not even said hi to you yet. So hi, John. How are hi. you? Hi. <laughs> uh, How's everything? I'm- I'm really good. I had my solo show on Friday here in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> and was that was that masturbatory Excuse show? Me. Oh, you mean like... What did you do? Did you jerk literally? off in front of people? Was it jokes? Was it singing? Oh, I see. A sexual joke. Um, mm. No, it was Shocking just a comedy. Shocking, finding that here <laughs> on this sex podcast. A sex joke. <laughs> um, no, it was. it's my solo comedy show, which I am bringing to New York. Listen, come see it. I'm really Sounds proud like of it. Sounds like a joke. May 6th, uh, Los Angeles, New York City, June 2nd. Come see those. And then I'm going to be doing it every month uh, in different locations, but those are the next two. So come to those. Links in my bio. I cannot wait to see it. You're going to like it. I know I will. I like the last one and the one before that and the one before that. This is our hits, baby. How's New York? Who knows? I just got back. Um, Where have you been? We just finished wrapping the Swords finale, which was such a weird wild experience because it's been a really long time where i was disconnected from the world without a choice because you, there was no wi-fi there was no cell service we had there were no mirrors on the house where were like, you we were in a cave in the middle of the grand canyon this guy had blasted this cooter out for eight years and now it's a cave that you can just go in and live in and we were filming there um and then we we had to go back and forth to Vegas a couple times. I know me and you, John, we we were I ships know. passing in the night. We were literally across the street from each other, but it just it was a it was that was so crazy. Be. I did not know you were going to Vegas, and I drove there, and we were texting. And I saw your post actually, and you were like on the strip, and I had just been there. I saw Taylor Swift. I loved it. It was so good. Oh, did you tell me? Yeah, I went to the Eras tour. It turns out. One of my very good friends, Camila, who I was in Hairspray with on Broadway, is one of Taylor's backup singers. And I gently was like, oh, you're going to be there too. I didn't even know they were going to be there, but I was like, oh my God, you're going to meet town if I can see you say hi. Not meaning the concert, just like say hi. I had not expected, I would never expect to go to the Eras Tour. It's so sold out. And last minute, the second night in Vegas on the Saturday, she was like, listen, I'm at Soundcheck. I just gave them your name and I think you have two seats. On the floor, we could touch her. She was so close. It was the best. It was an amazing show. 44 songs, three hours. I do not like anything longer than 30 seconds. And I stood there and bopped along like the white woman I am and got my (laughs) fucking life. Was it worth it? Yes. For the free dollars I paid, yes, it was worth it. I loved it. I had so much fun. (laughs) Go to the airs to spend all your money if you can. I mean, go see it. It's so good. Anyone will love it. Well, I'm seeing Janet Jackson's opening go. night on Friday, but and I don't is that have at a Six Flags? Where is that happening? It's a state. It's a Strawberry Festival in Florida, right? Okay. <laughs> no, it's at so. the Hard Rock in Florida. Um, oh, where Anna Nicole nights. Smith died. I've been there. Yes, yes. Hopefully, this will be a different, different celebration. <laughs> mm. But it's the Together Again tour, and I'm very excited about that. I hope but she before, lives. Uh, me too. Me too. I hope she's not on. What was she on? She like my body. What was that pill called? <laughs> Beautiful duets. <laughs> Kimmy. Um, Kimmy and everyone else, please go on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and rate us. If you like us, five stars. If you don't like us, five stars. Right. Uh, thank you to all our new listeners. Welcome to the show. Welcome. I'm Mark yeah. We lo- We never really Let's plug it out. as much as we should, like, you know, to tell people to smash that like button. But um, really... Smash that like do button it. or do whatever you do. Have you, have you plugged or smashed anybody this week since I last saw you? Any plugging, smashing, <sighs> cooter slamming? I, gosh, a little bit, a little bit. Got your dick wet, did you, daddy? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? That's a like little bit. That's perfectly fine to say. <laughs> um, I, I engaged physically with someone. Maybe. Were they awake yeah. and did you stay awake this time? <laughs> yes, all of the above. John has been known to take a quick cat nap during some pounding. The thing is, in these segments that we do, when we say, 
tell us one crazy, hilarious, chaotic time you did something. And it's just that. It's just the one time in Miami I fell asleep while being inserted into someone. It doesn't mean then you get to then bring it up. Like it's something I do all the time. It's not. I just was gently. Also, he was riding me. I was laying down. Okay, we well, didn't say that part position. before. I was that, in a sleep position. That I was is fine. You should have just said that. Bed, never brought it up again. Late in the evening. It was also back when I used to drink. You the know? Jen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People caught that Golden Girls reference. I had that Gimlet dream. You and had I that was... Gimlet dream. Um, well, if you have any other dreams and you need to stay awake, go over to NakedSword.com and check out Content House, which is out now, a part of the Sword series. There was a little stupid blog that made fun of the name, but guess what? Their name contains letters and numbers, so who the fuck cares? Tell me more about stupid names. Anyways, Content House is out now on NakedSword.com. Um, I met Parker Posey the other day. I know that's probably nothing to you. You're probably like best friends with her. You probably go knitting together. But no, I'm I not. I only ran into her one her. time at Two Boots in 1999. The pizza place? She asked to borrow the Parmesan. Oh, did she, did, that was great. You guys keep in touch? Bitch, no, that is my cheese, cunt. <laughs> She's not. How dare you call her a cunt? I'm so up in arms. You can't call women cunts. Look what that's you just not did. What, that's different. Okay. I find it. It was a hypothetical and a total joke. I worship Parker Posey, and she didn't politely. Hey, we're not getting back into that, okay? <laughs> we're not. That's uh, see, all you. Turn and I right am the one. back around. A cunt yeah, exactly. To the right way. Um, where'd you meet Parker Posey? Um, so she's doing a play, The Seagull, Woodstock, New York, in right over here on 42nd Street. And she's brilliant in it. She's just steals every scene. I she mean, everyone's a seagull. In it. She, she plays the seagull. She gets shot in the first act. Um, spoiler alert. But, and then my friend Rob is doing her hair. So we met her afterwards and she liked what I was wearing, which is all I needed in life. And Uh-oh. I told her how much I love her character. I didn't realize Jennifer she was Jolie. blind. <laughs> <laughs> she was wearing glasses, mm. um, but they were tinted with love. So that was lovely. I'm so happy I got to meet her. I hate Delta. You haven't. You like Delta? What's going on? I did see your post. Uh, you were. You really went. You really went in. I just before you start to tell the story, I do want you to know that I am a huge Delta fan, and I Me spend too. every dollar on my Delta Amex. I get the points. I am uh, a loyal Delta Sky Miles. Honey, silver Beesh. speaking. Everyone sit down. <sighs> what what is your what? status? Oh, not I'm not rich enough that. to be anything, but I am silver. No, That's I'm gold. Fine. I'm gold. gold. Gold, second tier. You could upgrade now and then. Yes. Well, so there's um, diamond then platinum, right? Um, platinum then diamond. Okay, yeah, I'm just gold. But gold for me is good. Gold's great. Who doesn't want gold? Silver's good. Nothing is good. If you can just get on a plane, you're doing all right. Um <laughs> But they lost I won't bags. be wanting to get on a Delta flight anytime soon. They they really, really were coming for me with this movie. They lo- It was one flight from JFK to Las Vegas. No stops. They did not put not only my bag, but anybody on the flight. They didn't put any of our bags on the flight. We were all in line after because they left JFK without putting one bag. They had to have known that. And when those assholes said, your luggage will arrive at Carousel 12. They knew very well that it was not going to arrive, and they just wanted to get no us off that plane. There were no bags on the plane? No, not one person. They did not put a bag on our flight. There was some type of commuter computer glitch at JFK. They did not put any bags on our flight. And then they didn't. we were supposed to immediately then leave to go to the Grand Canyon, but we had to stay overnight hoping that our bags would mm-hmm. come the next morning when we started filming. And they were not were refusing to pay for the hotel that night. They're refusing to give us any type of conversation other than like a couple miles here and there. But that's not all. Then they canceled one of the models flights in on Delta, which was L.A. to Las Vegas. Simple flight. Canceled it. And then they canceled our flight home. Rebooked us. Then they canceled that one. So finally, I was said, no, I'm out of here. And I just bought a flight with someone else. So sorry to complain, but I just really wanted to put them on blast. So fuck you, Delta. The thing is... I don't think they care if anyone puts them on blast. They mess up all the time. I'm not defending them. I'm saying this is something that should be fixed. But like all these people, I've... But they were usually more reliable than other companies. I know. But even... Yeah. No, I know. But as of late, it's just gone downhill. I guess it's a spectrum. Like if you look at American, United, like I'll definitely still pick Delta. And I also assume that my bags are going to get lost. 
Anytime I, I, I can't, they can't get lost. There's production shit in there. Okay, we're getting the wrap up. So I want to just mention some Bravo breakdown real quick. Um, Eva filed for divorce, but her husband has made some type of tweet that he wants to get her back. So I'm rooting for them. I love Eva, um, former Real Housewife of Atlanta, um, Real Housewife or Ultimate Girls Trip. I wish Portia was on there without Giselle. I think Giselle kind of brings her down and talks a little too shady. What the fuck is going on with Beverly Hills? They have this newbie, Anne Marie Wiley, whose husband was coming after Dwayne Wade for letting his child get a sex change, and he wouldn't do that. I hope they like edit her out before it airs, because I don't want to deal with another one of those controversies. Well, I haven't even heard of that one yet. I kind of sl- I, I, I've been sleeping on Beverly Hills, though. It got a little tired for me. I'm watching Jared from Subway, the documentary on ID. Okay. Well, okay, well, that brings us to hot topics. Let's go into just some thought topics because he, he's in there somewhere. There is a lot of shit going on in the world. Let's go through some thoughty toppies, starting yeah. off with Christina Aguilera. She did this whole interview. Um, she did uh, for the Call Her Daddy podcast. Uh, she painted vaginas on her nails. Very intricate, very detailed. Okay. Um, lots of things were revealed in that interview. Uh, she has come out as saying she is a big fan, a promoter of the swallow. She believes in swallowing. Uh, she says, I'll quote her. How about that? Oral sex, uh, really important to be with a partner where you can really explore. She's a promoter, promoter of this. Oh, here's her quote. Swallowing is a really good thing. It's got a lot of protein. There is something to be said after you put in the hard work. She also claims to have been, uh, she took it to the Mile High Club under blankets on a commercial flight. She is a part of the uh, Mile High Club on a commercial. Um, I am not, as we've established. She added, uh, there are some guys that don't like their testicles, in parentheses, being touched. And there are some guys that like brutal things happening to them. There are a lot of different levels. I don't like my balls touched with all that much, to be honest. But do you like to be swallowed? I, who, I, I think that's... Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So you're there on you're on Team Aguilera. It's not ironic that she left a bad taste in everyone's mouth that she worked with, the little cum swallower. Scream Six is now the highest grossing movie of all the franchises. It is really good. I'm so happy about that. Did you finally seen it? See it? I, I did see it. And two people next to me had sex while I was watching Scream Six at ten thirty PM Universal City Walk. Like like it's penetration? I didn't want to really interrupt and gawk. I just uh, glanced. You didn't look over and, and see if it was like a was hand or a they were, cooter? They were covered with a jacket and they were friction motions going up and down having sex. I turned to my friend and said, oh my God, they're fucking. And he was like, oh my God, they are. And then we just let them kind of finish. I ate their popcorn. Huh. I mean, this is, we didn't even write this down, but since you brought that up, I have had sex while Scream was playing in the background, but not at a theater. And it was recently, actually. <laughs> Which Scream? Five. Oh, was it a one night stand? Kind of. Um, anyways, so I'm glad that Scream 4 made the least. So that kind of, that was, I, I thought that was the worst one too. So apparently so did the public. Yeah, it goes in, it goes in a good order. Scream Six and one, two, three, five, four. Um, yeah, and you know, people are, I don't know, I liked it, I paid full price. Fat Burger and another, <laughs> and a cannabis company have collabed on a cannabis infused ketchup. I uh, want to make sure everyone knows about that. If people are into getting high while eating fries, big news Taylor Swift and Joe Allen broke up. I know you're not a big Swifty, I am. No, I'm not, I'm not, not Swifty. You've convinced me to see your concert. I love. Her albums, I love her music. She's a great songwriter. Yeah, I just think she's a lesbian. I'm not outing her. This is my opinion. And I hope it doesn't bully her. And if it does, I'm very sorry, Taylor. I hope you don't take offense. But just like... Yeah. I have never been... I've never not been speculative about her sexuality. She seems pretty straight to me. Um, But also, who knows? I do like her. And you know, we're going to be happy either way. Yeah. Ariana Maddox is going to join Dancing with the Stars. That's going to be a big paycheck for her, I'm sure. Uh, Good for her. Good for her. This cheating scandal is the best thing that's ever happened to her. I mean, I hope she's okay, Mm. feeling-wise, emotionally. But career-wise, she's really taken off. Yeah. Yeah. She's turned a negative into a positive. I'll say that. How about this is a little better. (laughs) 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Jen Shaw is developing a Real Housewives play while behind bars. That's how she's keeping herself busy. She's, um, you know, doing a little maybe um, Medea goes to jail vibe. I'm excited <laughs> to see that. I hope it goes to Broadway. I hope it goes to like the Lucille Lortel. You know, maybe oh, she please, where can I invest? What, where can I send my credit card information? <laughs> yeah, I bet she, that's exactly what she wants to know. Um, okay, so we've been talking about legacy on Bravo. People have been saying it's dead in the water. Uh, but the latest news is that they are saying that they're going to revive it, the idea of it as a girl's trip style show. And they're hoping Ramona will be a part of it. Listen, whatever they give me, I'm going to be happy. Because I love the New York gals. I want to watch them in whatever they're doing. I am a little upset. I, I, rumor is that Jill Zarin is the one that tanked the show because of the salary negotiations. She was holding out for more. Who knows? But I wish they just did a full season. Like, just do it. Get Luann. Get Sonia. Get Kelly. Get Durinda. Get Carol. Get Aviva. And get Bershawn. And just do it. Just get anybody but Heather and just put them together. Well, it sounds like they are going to. It's just going to be more of a girls' trip style show. They're going to do a full season of that kind of show, though. But New York City is part of the character to that show, so I want them to be in New York. I don't want, want them to be like in vacation somewhere. Well, they are doing Houses of New York just with a different cast, and I have high hopes for that. I think the people on that cast. Oh, me too. Great. I'm excited for that. They all, they all look lovely, like lovely gals that I would love to get to know. Uh, there is a guy in Alabama documenting his quest to eat Chipotle for a thousand days straight. He's 29. He lives in Mobile. Um, I swore off Chipotle. It wrecks me. It wrecks me raw. But congratulations to him and his toilet. Hope it's holding up. I mean, I get it. Chipotle, well, Chipotle is dangerous. Like, like you learned last week, I did choke. That was you an choked. actual story. People thought I made that story up. I swear to God that I happened. believed you. Um, but you know what? Speaking of like fast food, I wanted to change my life. Okay. So I went to Panda Express and I mm. ordered, I like to go to Panda Express. That's not the surprising part, but I went there and I ordered the noodles. Like I've never not ordered the rice, but like I said, I wanted to change my life. So I ordered the noodles, but I didn't know what, what are the noodle called? Lo mein. Okay. It is not lo mein. It is chow mein. Chow mein. So see, I that I didn't know what it was called because I've never not gotten the rice. So what are you saying? I'm... Don't you just look at the menu and say, "I want the noodles." What is it called? Chow mein. There was no signage. This was in Vegas. I don't know. Did they running out of signs in Vegas? But at the Panda Express in well, Vegas, can you they just did say, not can have I, signage. Can I have the noodles? I did. I said the noodles, but I was like, "That's so stupid." That's called something. Why don't I know what that's called? Is my point. And you oh. didn't know what it was called either. <laughs> Well, I know there is lo mein. There's also chow mein. There's also what's the difference between lo and chow? One of them is a thick noodle, and one of them is less thick. Okay, well that settles that. Now I'll never need to ask again. Um, Drag Race finale. I know you're very excited about that. Who are you rooting for? <laughs> um, I forget. Do you know who's, who's in the top? No, go ahead and tell. Okay, me. you have Sasha. Okay. Colby. You have Anitra. You have right. Mistress Isabella Brooks. And you have Lux Noir London. It sounds like London. a thousand people. Why is it the finale? It sounds like there's a billion people left. Who are you it's, like, about? it's like Sarah Jessica Raphael. They all have like three names. Uh, well, I'm voting for Sasha Colby. Not that it's up to me to vote, but. <laughs> okay. I, okay. I, I think because I'm torn between a tie or this is the first time I've ever wanted a tie. Did you know that they filmed a tie for Bianca season? They filmed Courtney winning, Adore winning, Bianca winning, and then a tie between Adore and Bianca. Anyways, no, I so I would that. be okay with a Sasha, Anitra tie, but then I also maybe, maybe just Sasha should win and then Anitra can go on to All-Stars. I know you're very invested in this opinion. Okay. That, no, that makes sense. I guess. <laughs> I quit watching. Um, but back to the low main. Can't you just say the noodles to the person working I, at Panda that's Express? That's what I and then did they say. say. Oh, we call that low main. And then you go, great, moving on. Give it to me. That doesn't take away my surprise at my ignorance of what that was called i've seen it a million times in my life why don't i know what that's called right i'm i, I was I ashamed of myself is what i'm saying <laughs> i was i only learned yesterday that oysters come alive and they die when you put the lemon juice on them i did not know that when you put them in your mouth they're still dying as having known that will you eat them still 
Why do you think well, they're on ice? I learned that when they arrived at the table, and I continued to kill them all with my teeth and tongue. I don't know. I mean, to me, my dad's a fisherman. I've eaten oysters a million times. It is like what pussy snot would be, I would imagine. We're going to be right back with our guests. Okay. Well, you are the one that eats it. <laughs> Welcome back to Discretion Advised. It's still me, John, and also here with Mark, and also my good friend, Johnny Sibley, who I'm a big fan of. He's on my show a lot over at Sirius, and also the new season of Logos, Sip or Spill, did I say it right? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> is out that's right fine. now. Check it out. And also, welcome to the show, JJ Knight. What's up, JJ? How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you guys? Fantastic. We're good. We're snatched. Great. It's, it's oh, so I was late, JJ, at the start of the show, and then I made you late. So I just want to clear that up so no one's mad at you. We were waiting on me. I told you the wrong time, <laughs> but thank you for being here. Awkward. And we are talking dirty jobs today, co worker shit. So, <laughs> JJ, can I ask? You've been a porn uh -huh. star, you're in over 75 scenes on nakedsword.com. Oh, God, is that many? Have oh, you ever wow. blocked anybody after a scene? Um. No, I've blocked people before, but not like after we've worked together. Usually I just like if I, if the scene is bad, I would just never talk to them again either way. So, okay, name me three you people you blocked. Um, <laughs> oh God. The, the problem is the scenes were so bad. I could literally think about the scene in my head the very last. You've worked with Tristan Hunter, Ryan Rose, uh, Bo Banks, perfect. Joey Mills, Johnny Rabbit, William Seed, Boomer Banks, Sean, Sevron. Who have you blocked? You've got to block one, someone from that list. No, not that list at all. Actually, I'm list. really I'm I keep it pretty good with people that I see all the time. Like, but there, I mean, there was one person that I worked with Min.com. The scene was just terrible. It was just taking taking all day. It was Who? like his name was Trevor, I think. What was so but, bad about okay. the scene? So he's one of those the the straight boys, and I think that he was taking the work no matter what was coming to him. So he said, "Oh yeah, it's fine. I'll I'll be the bottom of the scene." And usually, I mean, guys, I mean, they have to know what they're going to walk into before they walk into a scene with me. I mean, I, I would hope his they dick would. is very large is what he's trying to say. <laughs> and he clearly didn't. And so the entire scene, like I would have him missionary and he would be pushing back against me with his thighs, like trying to force me backwards. So I'm trying to thrust with my hips and being pushed back on my shoulders. And it was just very uncomfortable. It was the entire scene. I felt like I was basically like raping him because he was just not doing so well with it mm. that's not a great but, feeling <laughs> yeah, so we, did, we, didn't, we didn't really we didn't really talk after that scene okay well good I'm glad you didn't keep in touch anyways so yeah. johnny <laughs> wait so, i have a question I, wait uh, 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 the straight boys there's like the straight uh, boys that do gay porn you're saying and yeah. so Okay, cool, cool, cool. I was just wondering. I mean, the most, most boys stuff, that's the part that needs clarifying. <laughs> some are actually pretty good to work with. And I mean, some they're very professional. There's no like emotions attached to it. So they just come in, we get our job done, and then we go home. There's bim, bam, boom. That's how, that's how I like it. So I love that. Makes sense. I mean, that's, yes, that's, love that's that. how you're, it's a business, buddy. Okay. Yeah, it is. Johnny, you've worked with yeah. similar actors. Gene Smart, <laughs> Kim Cattrall, Juliette Lewis, Billy Porter, Angelica Ross, MJ Rodriguez. Who of your co-stars would you vacation with? Of that list, I definitely feel like I would vacation with uh, Juliette Lewis. Uh, just because she's like a rock and roll chick. Like, she's just like so chill and cool. Um, I'd probably vacation with Kim Cattrall as well because she's like, I feel like everyone treats her like, she's the queen that she is so i feel like i'd by by association be treated well and um also billy because billy's just a fucking like a holler like a hoot and a holler to be around yes yeah i want to go on that vacation yeah where would you go where would you go with juliet would you go to like a yellow jacket scenario where you might have to eat someone or keep it no tropical? i honestly I, p I pictured a tropical vacation with all of them because i prefer a tropical vacation uh, Yes. You okay. Yeah. And you can still eat Just, someone. Great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hope I eat someone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. All right. Speaking of eating oh, someone. Why the jacket's got to oh. be yellow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, God. JJ, you were in the uh, eight man locker room sex. What is sex? Oh my God. It was, no, it was from Scrum. Balls the of the Scrum, Balls. yeah. Yes, I love that film. Yeah. It is Devin one of my Franco, favorites. Franco, Drew Valentino, Luca Del Rey, Roman Todd, Tarzan Top, and Tristan uh-huh. Hunter. Who was the biggest diva? <laughs> um, trying to think. Honestly, the scene went actually surprisingly so well. Uh, if I had to say a person from that group, I. I would guess, I guess Drew in a way, because I mean he's so particular about like the so the ways nice. he actually. Because yeah, oh no, I love Drew. I think he's a total sweetheart. It was just the things he, like he was very specific. He was just like, if I'm going to bottom, it is going to be this way. If like if I'm going to suck a dick, it's going to be this way. So, but, I mean, I loved all those guys. So honestly, out of that entire cast, the movie went great. Mm-hmm. We we get, we got done with it pretty quick. The B roll was awesome, and that that's usually the worst part about those big movies. Is that How long does it take to shoot takes, a thing like that? That's a lot of people in a locker room. The easiest. I mean, it really is because it's nice whenever the directors come, kind of like how Mark does, and just says, "Okay, these are the positions that we're doing. This is what you're doing," and breaks it down into each segment, and it just makes the day just go so much smoother. And everybody knows where they need to be, so there's not just one random person just standing off to the side watching, being that's, a weirdo. Yeah, that's what I would be. And my intimacy coordinator. (laughs) (laughs) And do you all just do it at the same time, or is it a vignette situation? (laughs) No, it's usually all at the same time. It's just like every whenever he's focused on two specific people, but then he's also like, okay, well, the rest of you, make sure you're still doing something in the background, so it doesn't look like we're just filming this little segment and everybody else is doing absolutely nothing. So. It's the easiest to film an orgy because there's always something yeah. going on. So I don't have to wait for anybody to get ready to do, do, do anything. So those are so quick to film. There yeah. are the easiest. How many hours are we talking, though? Like, um, it, you're good. You can get really, done. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It didn't take that long. Um, but Johnny, <laughs> out of your co-stars, who's the best kisser? Oh, um... I'm trying to just remember everyone I kissed. I didn't kiss Gene, but I I wouldn't mind. Um, I would say Devin Way. He I um he's my co-star from Queer as Folk, and I enjoyed kissing him on cam well off on camera and off camera. <laughs> oh, oh. oh damn! Yeah, we, spill. We practiced. We practiced a little bit before. Did you practice after? No. We didn't. We had sip. like you know. Sip, it's funny sip, because, sip. <laughs> um, because for actors, a lot of times when you like play someone's love interest, you kind of like, and you're with them all the time. It kind of like feels like you're in a relationship, even though you're not. Um, so after we Method. filmed our scenes, and then like uh, we break up uh, after a couple of the first episodes, so we kind of had to like you know Spoiler do alert. that whole thing. It wasn't like method acting or anything, but um, but yeah, he's a good kisser. Damn. Okay, but in honor of your show on Logo, sip or spill, I'm going to ask you guys some probing questions. Okay. JJ, uh-huh. do you prefer oral or anal? Anal. Anal? Yeah, it's very, it's, well, well like you said, when a person has a big dick, it's, it's sometimes rare to find somebody that actually knows what they're doing with oral. So I'm just like, well, if you can't do it, I'm like, let's just go ahead and just get, get to the fucking <laughs> okay, Johnny, <laughs> do you have celebrity nude photos on your phone? Um, uh, no, because I don't save uh, celebrity nude photos, but I have gotten a good amount. Ooh. <laughs> Who has the smallest dick? No, I'm just kidding. Mm. <laughs> JJ. <laughs> Who, what is your most frequent sex toy that you use? These are all Johnny's questions. Would you go my watch my hand? Spill? My hand. Your hand. I don't like you fist to, yourself I often. Oh no, not not never that way. But <laughs> no, 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 no. Honestly, it's it's very rare that anything ever goes goes back there. So mm. yeah, like exceedingly rare. Exceedingly rare. Do you yeah. not enjoy bottoming, or you just? I think it's being in the industry for so long. It's. We, whenever we go on set, it requires us to be so perfect because we're doing it for so long that the idea of not being 100% like good, it just put, it gets me in my head. So. You're just afraid you're going to have a little whoopsie doopsie? Yeah, very much so. Oh. But, and I'm also very impatient person not that when it comes to doing that. <laughs> <laughs> when, I guess it's like one of those things where if you do it over and over, it starts to feel better. I just can never get to that point of doing it over and over. It's where I'm like, oh, yeah, this is starting to feel really good. Johnny, would you like to give him some tips? 
<laughs> I don't know. It sounds like it just sounds like laziness to me. <laughs> yeah. Is. Oh, it is for sure. It does. Uh, honestly, I feel like if you want it, you figure I mean, it out. Bottoming is this more is prep time, but it's less work during. I think, like, yeah, true. it's like true. Uh, I will agree with lay, that one. Well, you don't not just lay there, don't. Uh, but you know, it's like, I mean, I've sweat so much more when I'm topping than when I'm bottoming. So that's the only gauge that I have. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Have you ever fallen asleep while topping someone? No, I don't think so. What is it's, See, it's John, never... That's not that's not normal, John. Okay. Not just, never... What is, is that is... camera doing his taxes? What's that noise? What is that noise? Like an abacus. <laughs> okay. okay. For someone who doesn't want to be on the pod, your mic is awfully awfully open a lot. Always on. Um, Always on. <laughs> what if someone were to be t- what if you were writing someone and they fell asleep? Would you be offended? Um, well, I was yes, I mean, I fell asleep. yeah. You'd be offended? Okay. Yeah. John, it's offensive just, to fall asleep when you're fucking somebody. Did you do I that? I just wanted to. I, was yes. like, I did. From experience? One time. It was a small moment in time. And I woke back up. He woke me up. <laughs> Were you drunk? But it was back in those days. Yes, it was. Uh-huh. Yes, okay, okay. It was. Okay. Wow. That, that's I was also young. I was in Miami. <laughs> it was you. But, but no one else here has fallen asleep, correct? No, okay. no. Okay, John. Right. I'm not. I don't want to shame you. <laughs> Thank you, but I, I don't feel shame. Trust me. It was. It was a very. I was. La- it was in bed. It was time for bed. I just happened mm. to. <laughs> you know. Oh, see, I pictured you on the beach. You weren't on the beach. No, I, I would have <laughs> definitely <laughs> stayed awake. That was a different story, and I stayed very much awake. Talk a lot, <laughs> <laughs> John. Johnny, who have you muted? A lot of people. Um, no, no one that comes to mind. Um, I just, I, I feel like I've muted a bunch of like politicians and stuff like that. Yeah. Or block them. Uh, yeah. That's it. If someone leaves a hateful comment, not that you've ever received one, but do you block that person <laughs> or you just let it go? I block um, anyone who says something mean. Depends really? on how much time I have that day. Like sometimes I'll just block them. <laughs> sometimes uh if i recognize the name i'm like wait why do i recognize the name and then you'll find like they're in your messages and they said something nice in the messages so i'm like well that's not what you said in the dms uh-huh. and, uh, you know depends on how much time i have that just happened to me too someone was i checked to see who they were and the messages were super sweet but i had never responded but then the comment was really mean so I just hearted the DM. It was like, but don't you feel like that gives them like if you block somebody? Oh no, muted, muted. They can't tell if you've done it right. Muted, they don't know. Yeah, no, you can't oh, tell. Okay, so then yeah, I'm a fan of the muting, mm-hmm. not the blocking though. I've done it. No, I want them to know. <laughs> okay, so today's theme we're kind of talking about dirty jobs. Just to bring it back to that, JJ. Not that this is a dirty job, and I really am going to preface this so that I don't get killed. I don't think your ex, Brent Corgan, did anything. I think if he had, he would be in jail right now. And oh, I don't okay. know much about the story. Yeah. But regardless, if he's 100% innocent, which I'm sure he is, do you keep one eye open at night when you're sleeping next to someone who's been accused of murder? Um, your ex was accused of murder? Yeah, well, he, he was accused of ha- having a part to play and his manager getting murdered. Damn. he That movie King Cobra with... James Franco. Well, James about Franco. His ex. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, honestly, there was a time, there was a moment where let's just say that he was a little inebriated and he had accused me of working for the FBI because he said that the FBI had hired me to like figure out if he had actually done something. So in my head, I personally think that there was something, whether it was very minor or whether it was very big. He did have something to do with it, but like I said, it's been so long now. I mean, obviously, that's a little past the statute of limitations at this point. So, Allegedly, allegedly, no one allegedly. who's listening to this podcast <laughs> give him any type of hate. We do not know anything. I'm yes. sure he did not, or else the court yes. so I was just saying he was nice. very paranoid with me. Yes. He, he said he thought I worked for the FBI, and he was concerned that they were had hired me to figure something out. Hmm. So, did you, And that's what you figured. 
that, I mean, yeah, he was just so paranoid at that point. I was just like, oh, okay, whatever. Just, just eat your Wendy's. Chill out. You're good. <laughs> Wendy's. He was a square What's his Wendy's order. I was trying to get him to sober up. So I'm just like, here, just eat something. This, this will be, it'll be good. Like, you're fine. Just sit here. He, he thought there. He thought I put a listening device in the paper bag. Oh really? Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Well, book ending that innocent. Please don't murder me, um, Johnny. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> what was your biggest disaster on set? <laughs> um, I don't. I don't. I'm a. I'm a professional, so I don't really have disasters. I think the only thing I've ever had happen on set where I was like, "Oh shit," was when I did the first season of Pose. I was um, my character was dying of AIDS, and I had like all the makeup and the stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm like always in a good mood. So I like get the makeup done and I walk onto set and I'm like, Hey everybody. And everyone's like, like looks at me like they they just treated me completely different that day. Um, just because I think it was really jarring for them to see like the makeup and like how skinny yeah. I was and whatnot. Um, anyway, it was, it wasn't a disaster, but it was definitely something that I was like, Oh, I can't just like pop up here looking like this and be myself so i was alone a lot that day (laughs) did you get to keep anything for your costume you could go as like halloween you could get some you could keep some of the um lesions no 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 lesions i don't think did i have johnny what no um (laughs) if you were to you were in the ryan murphy world what other show would you jump on and want to be a part of next um, I would want to be a part of one of those, uh, like true crime, like, uh, shows. I actually, um, Good I don't know if they've announced this. Actually, I can't say it. Um, yeah. but they're, yeah, <laughs> one of those, one of those like true crime. You'd be or, great like, in the rent of, of uh, role of Brent Corrigan. <laughs> Go for that it. was john hill who said that john hill not <laughs> i don't know who these people are well i hope you don't find out yeah <laughs> is it game time cameron's yes, giving me is. a finger yes. all right we're gonna play fun fact where i have six facts either about jj or johnny or maybe i just made it up John, you're going to have to guess what it is. Are you ready? Live, yes. Question number one, John Hill. Mm -hmm. Who hates being slapped around in bed? It's not Johnny. I'll say it's JJ. (laughs) JJ, was it you? I mean, I wouldn't, I guess it would depend on the moment, but I mean, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but I mean... Give me okay, the but right the answer is Johnny. Johnny does not like being slapped oh. around in bed. Yeah. What happened? Did you have a bad experience? So I was having a threesome with these two guys, and oh. one of them was like, "I want to get, I want to, I want to get rough, and I want to slap you in the face." And I'm like, "Okay." And I'm like, "Of course, he's gonna like do it, like you know, a stage slap." He yeah. basically oh. unhinged my jaw. <laughs> he hit oh me my so god! Hard. That's awful. My jaw was like out of place so the other guy took me to the bathroom and like helped me like no put it back Ah. anyway i think i punched him right after he slapped me because it was like my reaction to like you know what i mean so no no more slapping no more you know no more none of that so yeah Yeah, but i was definitely no to that uh, yeah i love improv i'm very yes and like let's try something new but (laughs) that was uh yeah a moment Okay, got that one wrong. (laughs) I got that one wrong. Okay. JJ. Uh Uh-huh. No shit. John, you're guessing this. There's so many J's. I thought I was going down the line. Sorry. Um, John, who in the group has had implants? Implants? Implants. Or did I make it up? Where? Oh, neither of these gentlemen have implants. (laughs) Sirs, raise your hand if you've had implants. Oh my God! Where JJ. on where a brain implant? <laughs> no, <laughs> his toes done. No, no, no. I got, I, got, I got, my, I got my chest done. Yeah. Oh my God! Let me see. I want, I want that. I have. Yes, I, you can log to... on to discadpod.com or follow us on YouTube, TikTok, or wherever okay. else the Cameron puts us. 
Johnny, what's in there? Hold on, what's in there? Okay, it's, yeah, it's JJ, a, show your show your beautiful tits. We just did oh, silicone. Saying, okay, so I'm, well, I wasn't curious if this was like a rule. Don't take off your shirt. In front no, of you can take off your shirt. <laughs> just don't take your balls out too. Well, yeah, it's not what I'm doing. Is it? It's not silicone. Like it is. Chicken? It's like a hard. It's like a hard silicone plate. Mm. Wow. He's taking I want off that. two of his blouses. I mean. Oh wow. It looks great. So, so it's kind of hard to tell, but yes. Yeah, so Where's your like, scar? <laughs> right there. <laughs> You can oh. see the scars on there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So they're they're they're. It's like a thick thick scar too. So. Girl, how much that cost? That was only it was only five thousand actually. Per titty? No, just the entire thing to get it done. Now is like, that a B right. cup? Is that a C cup? We're looking at a so, full double D. So with the implants, they have to be um, they depending on how your chest is. So if a man was to have like an actual like, I don't want to say boobs, but he has a bigger chest in that area. It's easier to put an implant in because the muscle is much more relaxed. Whereas for me, since I was such a skinnier guy, that the muscle is so tight to my body that they could only literally get it into like right here in the corner. And if they put it in any more, it would have shredded the muscle. So because they put it gone, underneath it. Have you gone swimming since they've been in? <laughs> yes. Is it easier? <laughs> is it easier to float? Um, no, I don't, I don't notice a difference. <laughs> okay. Just it looks really it's great. Like, it looks real. It looks great. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. honestly, you can't, you can't even feel it. it. It's underneath the muscle, so I mean, everything still mm. grows with it. It would just give me that extra little pump that I wanted in the corner. I want so, that. I want that. John, <laughs> John. no one needs that. You all look great. I'm trying to grow my upper my upper titty. Well, okay. Right. We'll Who talk in the group line. do you think lived in China for two years? <sighs> I think that would have come up with me and Johnny. Maybe JJ. <laughs> no. Uh, I did. I, I okay. lived in China from 2013 to 2015. I was actually, before my world in porn, I was a uh, Abercrombie and Fitch manager. So they sent me over there to open stores and train managers and recruit and everything. So okay. my, my, my stints what? in retail. How did you get that job? I, well, I graduated college and got- You it, went got, to college? Yeah, I got a degree Why in Why has that never come so, up? I don't know. Nobody ever asks. They, they care about what's in my pants, <laughs> not what's assumed. in my brain. Oh, okay. I got one right. <laughs> you did get one right. Um, all right, two more. Oh no, because you just answered that one about Abercrombie. Who has once massaged Susan Bucci's feet? Johnny. I just know when you're a New York actor, you end up on the set of All My Children. You do a bunch of weird shit, or wherever you were, you massaged her feet. You shrimped her out. You shrimped her out. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't go that far, but I did. That was my first acting job, actually, was uh, her uh, being her pool boy um, in oh. one of her like. That was my first. Devious my first job in New or... York was it was a pool boy under five on All My Children. Oh, you really? had lines. I didn't yeah. have any lines. Oh my god! I had you both were soap <laughs> opera pool boys as your first job. Wow. That's a really weird. I carried a tray, a cabana boy. <laughs> what, did it have shrimp cocktail in it? No. Wow, you shrimped her out. That's so cool, yeah. Johnny. Well, it's funny because she didn't know. She got to set and she didn't know I was going to be massaging her feet. So she was like, I'm so sorry. My feet look disgusting. They didn't. They just were like, you know, sweet little Susan Lucci feet. I don't know. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm Wait, take so that did clip John on. get any of those right? Because that's the end of the game. I got two. Yeah, right. yeah two. Maybe two and a half. Uh John, you're so good. All right, Johnny, where can people find you, follow you? What's happening next? Um, season three of Hacks will be coming out soon. I don't have a date, but HBO Max. Is that the final? That. Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, oh, if it God. is news to me. Um, <laughs> and on social Sorry, media. Sorry, I don't want to have to tell you like this. <laughs> uh, at Johnny Sibley on all the platforms. Logos JJ, what's still. happening next? You just you shot a movie for me, yes. Art Swallowing, uh -huh. which comes out at some point on NakedSword.com. But what else have you been up to? What's coming next? I mean, honestly, it really, uh, OnlyFans has been the like the prime kicker for me right now. Um, that's usually where I, I spend most of my time, and it's, it makes it a lot easier so I can travel a lot more um, and do that. So usually at OnlyFans, and then also my my partner has now decided that he wants to jump on the OnlyFans bandwagon now. What is so. his name? 
uh, Kev. Oh, well, he's he's going by Harvard, his poor name. Where can people Harvard, find him? Don't give me his social on Twitter. On Twitter, Harvard Hunk. That's what is it? Cause... Harvard Hunk. Yeah, you've converted him to be a porn star. When you met him, was he not a porn star? He was not actually. No. What was he uh... doing? Managing Abercrombies? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. He's actually much smarter than me. In that he, he, yeah, he went to Harvard and he graduated. And so he was working for uh, just a, a company out here in Chicago. So he really is a Harvard Hunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got a smart one. Jesus I finally Christ. got one that's not crazy. Well, I don't know if he's smart. He's with you after all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Where can people find you? Where can they find your OnlyFans? Where can they find to follow you? Uh, Twitter and OnlyFans is JJ Knight Triple X, and then Instagram is the Real JJ Knight. So oh. perfect. All right, mm-hmm. John. We're going to be right back, giving each other a little job interview. We will be Ooh. right back. Um, welcome back. Okay. We are going to, you know, I have an interesting job. You certainly have an interesting job, Mark. I wondered how well we would fare. Should we go into the real world and have to actually get an actual job? And my hunch is that we wouldn't do well. So we have collabed. Cam has sent us some uh, regular, um, me saying this means I feel less capable of the general public to know basic information or to how to really even do fucking anything so we're going to test each other and see how well we would fare should we need to get a job yes okay and i want cameron to listen to both of our answers and decide who's getting the job once we're done question number one john Mm, okay Tell me. Well, should we time. have a hypothetical job? Like, give us the position okay, we're interviewing yeah, what, for. Yeah. Cam. What what position are we working for, uh, Cameron? What are we? What's the goal here? Uh, a nice staffer position, a cashier, that kind of just a front of house customer service at Come and Go. Uh, yeah. Cashier at Come and Go. That's a gasoline place, right? Yes. K U M and G O. Okay. We're looking to pump. All right, John. Tell me a time that you failed. I view failure as one of the most important building blocks of accomplishing and achieving a well-rounded life. I have failed at many things in my life, and through those failures, I have learned my strengths. My failures are I have failed at basically all of the math part of the SAT and also failed at um, uh, any kind of science. Well, here at the Come and Go, we don't have room for failure. John We're not Hill. there yet. I'm giving you kind answers. Good okay, ones. Good, I'm, good. I'm killing right. it so far. He's building the Okay, character. I'll ask you one. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? Here at the Come and Go, because I love this product so much. I want to be around it all the time. I want to encourage others to buy it. I want other ones, everyone's life to be changed like That's mine right. was at Come and Go. So I see myself here, sir. John? Mm-hmm. How do you deal with pressure or stressful situations? I have been practicing transcendental meditation for five years now. I find it a a major part of my life. I deal with pressure by taking a deep breath and asking others how I can be of service. Well, sir, here at the Come and Go, we don't have time for meditation. We need to keep our eyes on the pump. Logging answers. Um. What did you do in the last year to improve your knowledge? I started following Come and Go on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I like everything you guys do. I like your business model. And that has made me not only more knowledgeable, but a better person. Okay. No books. John. No movies. All right. Yep. If your shift is coming to an end, but your replacement hasn't arrived yet, what would you do? I would politely say... Um, I would volunteer to stay a little bit longer and see if I could bridge that gap. And I would also definitely make sure a manager contacted them directly to make sure they were safely on their way. And if not, ask how I could be of service. Acceptable. <laughs> um, wow. From your resume, it seems like you took a gap year. What would you like to tell us why that was? I got sick. All right. Okay. John. Yes. How would you handle a customer who claims that their drink order is wrong? The customer is always right. I would say, I'm sure, let me go ahead and make you that again. 
here at the Come and Go, we only serve gasoline. So yet. if we have a customer drinking it, that is a serious part. medical problem, and you should he call nine one one. Feedback, not you. <laughs> okay, shit. Sorry. <laughs> are you are you comfortable wearing costumes in public? <laughs> Unfortunately, I was raised Jehovah's Witness, and we do not believe in any sort of costume, unless it is for the Lord Jesus. To be well, covered. here at the Commodore, we have a required uniform that you must wear during every uniform shift. is different. Yes. I would, I am eager to wear the uniform, eager I'm, to represent well, your company and look as I'm sure you look great in it. I do look great in everything. Oh, uh, let's see. What is your favorite uh, food item here at Come and Go? The gasoline. Right. If you put it on a barbecue and make some uh, smoked mullet. It tastes delightful. John. Yes. If you could be one animal, what would it be? Uh, if I could be one animal, I would definitely be um, a horse because I believe in horsepower and I believe that fuels engines and I believe that gas also fuels engines. And I want to create an environment where we are giving as much power to people's vehicles as fucking cunt possible. Mark, would you be open to a daily drug test? <laughs> and if you're absolutely pot, if you it did fired. not take time away from me putting my work in at the come and go that okay. comes first okay. john mm-hmm. explain what a modem and a router is to an eight-year-old a modem and a router are the ways we are able to email people and connect and communicate may i be of service <laughs> you little fuck we do not allow that language at the come and go. <laughs> so you better wash that out of your mouth right now. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, how would you handle a customer who uh, claims that you have shorted them on their change, pocketed it, and stolen it? Here at the come and go, we do not believe in change. We believe in keeping things the same because that's the tried, true, and American way of gasoline. Correct. That's correct. Okay, can you just choose who you're going to give the job to now, Cameron? <laughs> Good job. Uh, Can't um, wait any longer. <laughs> I really don't like what Mark was doing with his voice during that entire thing, so I'm going to give us a job. I get the I job. I am from the South, and my father is a fisherman who cooks smoke mullet, so I was impersonating myself. I didn't like it. I'm going to give it to John. He doesn't Don't quit like your day me. job. Keep filming he people fucking. like me. <laughs> Whatever, you can go to my father's website, Captain Anthony's, and buy your own smoke mullet. Smoke mullet onlyfans.com. That, real? that is real. <laughs> Can't make fun of it unless you are it. All right, we will be right back, right? Are we done? We are going to be with the owner and the CEO of Nasty Pig. He was just invited to the White House. We're going to find out what type of brassiere Jill likes to wear. We'll be right back. Oh. Welcome back to Discretion Advised. I am Mark McNamara, along with my good Judy Fruity, John Hill. And now we are joined by the CEO and president of Nasty Pig. Please welcome to the pod, David Lauterstein. Did I say that right? Lauterstein. (laughs) I knew I even asked beforehand and I still knew I was going to fuck that up. How are you? David. I used to live on 19th Street right by Nasty Pig, and I used to walk past it all the time. It was so cute. You have little pigs dressed up in fetish gear, which is what (laughs) everyone wants to see. Like, you know, my mom would come visit me from Texas. She would love, you know, she was like, what a cute little store, Nasty Pig. She didn't get it. (laughs) Wow. Yes. How did you get started, or when did you get started? Uh, So my husband and I, well, then my boyfriend, now my husband, we started it in 1994, uh, with $50 and no experience, uh, we just wanted to uh, create a brand that really spoke to uh, sexual positivity and queer identity. So it's been around for coming on 30 years. Wow. Yeah, support years. small business. Yeah. And what was the mission statement, Beck? What was your vision? You wanted to provide <laughs> what for whom? Well, well, way back, it was fun clothing that gets you laid. Um, we really, <laughs> but we really, you know, when we started the business, uh, we started at a time when uh, AIDS was still uh, taking our community down. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, the prevailing wisdom at the time was like, let's blend in, you know, like, like, don't, like we're just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. And, and Fred and I were really 
we were really concerned that our identities and our, 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 our ability to be queer people on our own terms didn't get lost. So we started the brand kind of as a rallying cry uh, to reclaim some of the identity that had been lost. Over all these decades, what's your best seller? Uh, so my best seller is probably my husband's union suit design. Uh, he designed uh, a union suit. But instead of having like a traditional butt flap, which kind of makes you look like a saggy diaper, he <laughs> put snaps all the way around. So it fits perfectly. Uh, it's equal parts like Christmas morning and slutty night. Um, okay. uh, and it just does really well for us. Uh, we recently had Easter. Do you have any Nasty Pig Easter gear? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a place for your eggs, though. I was thinking baskets. <laughs> you were recently invited to the White House. Now, which jockstrap does Biden like? Uh, so I don't know what jockstrap Biden likes, but I can tell you his his uh, uh, the people in his, who, who work at the White House under him. There are a lot of queer people there. Biden walks the walk and talks the talk. He's got quite a diverse group of people. So I don't know what he's wearing, but we met quite a few nasty pink customers who are working in the White House. I recently just got my first jockstrap and I... It doesn't quite fit. What do I need to know? What am I looking for when I'm trying to lift and highlight my cheeks? Lift and separate. Um, I would say Skims by Kim Kardashian. No, I'm really? kidding. Okay. Um, no, no, no. I, you know something? It all depends on getting the right size, the, uh, 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 you know, a perfect fit. Always go a little bigger than a little smaller so that it doesn't cut, cut into you too hard. Mm. Uh, but you know, a good lift and separate is what we specialize in. See, okay. John has these big, giant tree trunk legs that are at least like, what are they, 40 inches around? Oh, my know. Lord. I don't know. They're, they're giant. Big. They're beautiful and giant. So you would ex just get a looser strap then a little, to a fit yeah. your little trunks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All if right. you want to come in for a personal fitting, I, I do. Would be happy. Yes. I do. I love big legs. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> you're welcome. Get a load of these. Okay, I'll come in. I'm coming. You know what? I'm coming to Fire Island for Memorial Day. I'm going to come in the day before I go. Pimp me out. Separate these meat cheeks. I will pimp you out, and I will be on Fire Island that weekend. So I will. I will oh follow up. Oh my God, up. David! See them yes. on stage. Yes. <laughs> God, I'm I so will excited. be there. Okay, great. So you have a book coming out, Little Pig, Little Pig. I Tell finished me about it, it yesterday. Oh, congratulations. Wow. I finished the manuscript yesterday, 128,000 words. Work. Oh, wow. Oof. So What's um, it about? So basically, it's really, <laughs> it's telling the love story. Uh, it's telling the journey of me coming out of the closet, uh, meeting Fred, um, and us starting the company, and us really wanting to be these uh, sex-positive people, and then along the way, finding out that we found out that Fred was positive. Uh, and back then, an HIV negative guy and an HIV positive guy didn't stay together. Mm. Uh, so it's about me having to make a very important decision in my life. Do I, do I you know, leave the man I love because he, he's going to die? Or do I stick to my mission? You know, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to be sex positive for the world, it, it, if, that, if it can't start with my man, who's it going to be? So mm -hmm. it's really about that journey, uh, which is, uh, sorry, it's, it's pretty fresh because uh, I, I just wrote uh, about it yesterday. But um, uh, yeah. That's beautiful. When does the book come out? I think it comes out in about a year. So you're going to have okay. to wait a little oh, bit. Well, but, great. Uh, you got yes. us all excited. Now we have to wait. All right. Where can people follow you to, to follow along with this? Well, you'll be able to follow me uh, on Instagram at SweetGaveNYC. And you will also be able to follow it on my brand's profile at, at Nasty Pig, okay. both on Instagram. Okay. Thank Amazing. you so much, you. Dave. I'm going to see you uh, the week before Fire Island, and we're going yes. to we're gonna get this ass together. We are gonna I want to come to the fitting. I, wanna, I just need to film some BTS. That's okay. all. Okay. We just want to make, you know, we want to make this a disc ad pod decision of which one he should get. He'll Trust. model them all, and we'll, we'll make our decision, little pig. I will work. pimp you out. I promise. Okay. As requested. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. My cheeks need your help. Thank you so much. I, I am to, here to oh help your God. cheeks. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. And don't forget that you can watch the full podcast on YouTube and subscribe to our newsletter over at discatpod.com. And make sure that you're following us on all the socials. We're at Discatpod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. That's D-I-S-C-A-D-P-O-D. And don't forget to rate us 5 million stars on Apple and Spotify. (laughs) Until next time, bye, y'all. Bye.